the first step is to install the software. So begin by placing the CD in the CD drive. Open the disk. And then you need to choose um, the correct operating system for your uh, for your computer. This computer is running uh, Windows 7. It's a 32-bit system. Uh, so I choose Windows 7 and Vista 32-bit and then double click on the install file and hit install. Your list here may differ based on what's already installed on your computer and what else needs to be installed. Um, so you just hit install and that begins that process. At this point, you just enter your name and your company. Hit enter. Uh, if you need to change the settings, you can go into custom and customize some of them, but we're just going to do the complete uh, setup right now. Uh, the next step is to um, set up the database. So you want to hit the start menu, go to all programs, search for Dixon data and go to database config click setup database hit run and you're just gonna let it do its thing while it uh, does it it should run automatically if there's any issues you can uh, check with the instruction manual or feel free to give us a call um, if any dialogues come up, just hit yes. And then eventually you'll get a notice down here that says it's successfully upgraded or successfully created the database. Then you can just click out and click out of that. Um, next, you want to go back to the Dixon data folder um, and start the Wizard 2 service monitor. Um, you'll notice that there will be an icon down by the clock it'll look just like that when you hit start service that'll turn green and so will the one down by the clock and you know you're good from there so you can just lower that box and it it disappears and uh, goes into the tray another important step is to set your uh, computer's IP address to be static this is important because the logger will always look for the computer that you told it to originally. So if the computer's IP address changes, then it'll be looking for the original IP address and won't be able to find it and you'll get connectivity issues. To do that, I go to Start, Control Panel, Network and Internet Settings, and this will vary based on um, which, um, which operating system you're using. But for the most part, you need to get to the change or view adapter settings. You want to right click on the local area connection, hit properties, uh, and then you want to find internet protocol version 4. Uh, right click on that, or don't right click, hit just hit properties, and then you'll type in the uh, proper information here. I've blurred mine out for security reasons, but um, you'll enter your information here and uh, move on from there. You may need to talk to your IT department to get the uh, proper information, but they should have that available for you. Close that, and you're good with that. After you've uh, set your computer's uh, IP address to be static, uh, the next step is to open up the Wizard 2 software. Um, this is the interface. Um, once you have a number of units, they'll all be laid out right here on this grid. Um, you can view the structure in a tree-like format um, on this page. And then this shows you all units, wireless, wired, uh, receivers, repeaters, and every unit connected to the system. This tab, the difference here is this tab only shows you the loggers um, on your system. So to get started with your Ethernet unit, you uh, connect it via USB. Um, and the window should pop up shortly. 
I just noticed our broker has not started, so I'll just right click that, hit start service, and now that's up and running. Lower that down. Um, it has found the logger, and there it is. So here's the uh, Ethernet logger. I'm going to rename it Matt's Enet logger for Ethernet logger. Um, logger was too long, so. Matt's desk will be the location I put it in. The sample rate, I'm going to leave it at a 10 second sample rate. That's really fast, um, but that'll be that'll be good for getting some example data. Uh, unit ID, you can set it to uh, four digit alphanumeric code. I'm going to leave it as active. Um, if you make it inactive, then the logger won't do its thing. Uh, push to start, I'm leaving that turned off. Uh, and what that allows you to do is to go put that into its location, press the button, and then it begins to log. I'm going to name channel 1 temperature and channel 2 uh, humidity. Uh, this tells you your uh, device's serial number. This is how often you want to calibrate it. And this is um, whether you have the audible alarm on or not. I'm going to leave it off for now. This next tab uh, is emails. Um, so you can add emails to the system to receive notifications. Um, that is in another video, so I'll leave that for now. Uh, alarm settings, if you want to set alarms, you can uh, set those conditions here. Uh, you can also set the alarm delay, which allows you to say, if it hits this condition, I want you to wait you know, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or whatever your protocol says to um, to, to wait to inform me that there's an issue occurring because uh, something something like opening a refrigerator door will cause a burst of warm air and then uh, the logger may go off but the last step of the Ethernet logger is uh, the network settings tab um, so you want to click uh, set target IP address this is my computer's IP address so you select that one hit OK uh, if you need to set the logger's IP address you can do that here but most of the time you'll be good with um, leaving it as obtain an IP address automatically via DHCP. So you hit save changes and start. Uh, a window will tell you um, that everything is good and you can close it and disconnect it. And from there we will go connect this to uh, an Ethernet jack uh, near my desk. So I'm back behind my desk and what I have here is the Ethernet unit itself. I have a power cord uh, which is the standard Dixon power cord, and then uh, an Ethernet cable. Uh, one of these will be provided in your box, but it may look different than this one. So the first step is uh, go ahead and plug in the power to the wall. Um, plug this into the device. Make sure your probe is connected to uh, your device properly, like such. Um, plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the wall and the other end plugs into the top of the logger uh, like such. You want to make sure your power switch is on. You'll notice the light turn green and these guys are blinking green every so often which just shows they're transmitting data. Um, now this is blinking a few colors to just indicate that it's transmitting data as well. Uh, so you can set this down, uh, wrap up the cords nicely, do whatever. We'll leave this here for now, and I'll come back and tidy up later. But for now, we'll go back to my desk. So we're back in my computer, and you can see the uh, logger is now recording. We're getting temperature and humidity readings. Uh, and it shows you your last re reading day and the last time it transmitted data. Um, you can do a number of things. You can edit the logger by right, what I just did is right click here, click edit. You can customize the graph. You can view live graph, which is what I'm going to do. And you can see the information coming into the system right now. Um, it takes a few minutes to stabilize and get to uh, the actual readings, but as you can see, it's starting to level out a bit, um, both the uh, RH, the relative humidity, and the temperature. If you hover over the uh, squares, you will get the individual data points, uh, which is just good to um, have for the information. Uh, if you click Show Table, you can see the specific um, readings at, the, at their specific timestamps. Uh, you can just go back to the graph. You can print um, 
and gives you a few options of what to print and whatnot. You can save this as a uh, number of different image file types, um, or you can export the raw data to an Excel file or a CSV file, whichever uh, is better for you. Um, other than that, that's pretty much the, uh, the Ethernet system as a whole. Uh, thanks for watching.